Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with John. That'd be me. <laughs> Mike. Hoy. Christy. And Matt. Cheers. Uh, we're going to do a part two to the video we did last night, or last week. And uh, I have to admit, I haven't even looked at it since it went up. So if you commented on the last video, I'm sorry I haven't responded back to any of them mostly good feedback so far you know nothing was like that was horrible <laughs> hey bastards you want to kill baby seals there was none of that so that's good that's I'm surprised. good uh, i heard that somebody complained about the chimes though yeah you know what like i understand like hey the chimes you know they're kind of background noise whatever but uh with this group of people, we really like those chimes, and so for, so for us to get rid of it or to try to muffle it would be kind of a bummer. But not saying it won't happen. If we get a wind saying, like that, I'll, I'll tie the Yeah, it was up. pretty windy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, a, a rare occasion. Yeah, not, not an everyday thing, for sure. Uh, yeah, um, and we're, if you haven't <clears throat> noticed, we are inside tonight. We don't have our fire. Because I forgot the lights and Tech Secure sucks. Boop, so. boop, boop, boop. Or so. Tech Secure sucks today, I guess. Something like that. And it seems like every other update <clears throat> they fuck something up and it becomes unusable. Although I haven't had problems. I heard that you had problems and uh, some other people had problems. Yeah. Uh, so. I usually do updates like a month late. <laughs> like, I just look at my, like, I'll be like, oh, I'm supposed to update shit, and then I leave it for, like, two hours and come back, and everything's updated. My phone usually does them on automatically, so. So, Matt, let's move over to your beer corner. Smoked porter today. Nice. Was actually giving stone me. smoke porter? Smoke? Yes, stone oh, okay. smoke porter. It's good Classic. Stuff. I, uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I yeah. was actually given that for free, so. Somebody who works at Stone gave me a bunch of free beer, so. Drink it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> free beer is always good. Free beer is amazing. Unless it's Coors Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be gross. You know, there was a, they probably still do, but there's a time um, way back in the, in the long, long time ago where I used to go <laughs> to bars and like there'd be like the Coors Light girls that would show up and they'd be like, oh, hey, how you doing? No, 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 no. And they'd try to, you know, sweet talk and all this sort of stuff and be like, well, what are you here for? They're like, oh, we're with like Coors Light. I'm like, oh, super. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm not really going to order a bur uh, Coors Light unless you give me a coupon that says free on it. You know, like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing it anyway. <laughs> I had seriously turned down beer at people's houses because I wasn't. All they had was Coors. Well, I wasn't sure that oh. it wasn't like Coors or Bud Light or something like that. I mean, I mean I'll turn it down because if you put it in front of me, it's kind of polite it's kind of impolite to turn it down once it's in front of you. So I'll turn it... If they say, hey, you want a beer, and I don't know that they're craft brew fans, I, I'll just turn it down. You won't ask? Well, for, like, the major domestic... Uh, well, oh. it, seems kind of, it seems kind of bad, too, to be like, okay, well, what do you have? Of course, like, eh, no thanks. Well, it's just honest. You're being authentic. <laughs> So so honest to just turn it down. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the major domestic brands, I'll drink it as long as it's not the light version. I'm okay with Coors. I'm okay with Bud, even though Bud tastes like it's got butter in it for some reason. <laughs> and uh, uh, who am I missing? Bud, Highlight, um, Miller. Miller is probably my favorite out of the three domestics, like the major, if I'm going to pick one. But as long as it's not light, I'll drink it. But if it's light, I kind of be like, well, you better give me a beer bomb so I can suck this down. What do they do to make it light? They pretty much dilute it, dilute is it. what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I had somebody explain to me, like, very scientifically, like, oh, they do this, this, and that. I go, so, like, can you simplify it? And he's like, oh, yeah, they just dilute it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> that's why All it right. tastes like water. Yeah, because it's just yeah. diluted, yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm doing this puzzle here. And I'm doing one too. And, and <laughs> I'm going to put it away in just a second. <laughs> Once he finishes that puzzle, I'm really it close. will disappear. So the environment. I think yes. Yes. Fun. Right. Uh, we decided to do a second episode, both because I think there's some things that we didn't really touch upon. Plus, Christy here held the very first 
bipartisan? Well, it was. I, we founded um, many, oh, almost ten years ago, founded a, an environmental think tank called the Iris Forum, um, which was the first multipartisan environmental think tank. Is when I was running for office. Nice. And we had about. Back when you still. Yeah, when I in still was exactly. Um, and there were um, about six different people. You know, there was a. We had a. Um, uh, Republican, a Democrat, a Green, a Libertarian, um, a Peace, no, a um, Natural Law, and one other one. And we all had, it was around having a conversation about the environment, uh, looking for common ground. Mm -hmm. And it was really great. We went and did, um, we did Earth, um, the Earth Fair, we did on stage, so it was a conversation. Oh, similar yeah. to this, but it was, it got heated, you know, because everybody had their <laughs> own um, ideas, uh, their own filters, we called it, mm -hmm. that they were coming through. And But we were committed to coming to an, uh, co finding common ground in what we... And mm -hmm. So it was great. It was really awesome um, um, opportunity to talk about different things and, and actually, as a group, work on, you know, coming to some solutions. So what did you guys agree upon, like exactly? Uh, sometimes well, it was we're... really hard. Well, sometimes it was yeah, really there really must have been something that where you, where you found like, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's not kill baby seals or something. Well, you know, like baby seals was... would be more of an animal rights type of thing. So we didn't deal with baby okay, seals. Okay, fair enough. So you that wasn't right. the best example. No, but well, I mean, baby yeah. seals are so, part of the environment. No, so. I, mean, we're, I mean, property rights was, a, was an easy thing to agree. I mean, now property rights is, you know, a question thing. But that was an easy place where we could all agree on things. Mm -hmm. um, where somebody violated somebody's, um, uh, where you have particulates. You know, if, if you have pollution, you know, particulates are um, a violation of somebody's property. You know, you're, you're putting um, stuff on somebody else's property. Right. So we could all agree on certain things. So we got that. Some of the things were what, very difficult. What about air pollution? Air pollution was a particulate matter. Yeah, that's I mean, a your particular thing, your, right? it's, it's, uh, We disagreed with the CO2 because that was, um, there was na a natural gas, you know, mm -hmm. that actually fed um, plants. And so there were, you know, there were some disagreements in, oh, in yeah, that Yeah, whether we call carbon a pollutant. Yeah, it's yeah, when it's really something that's just part of the cycle of, of the environment. Mm -hmm. so, so with everything, uh, there are levels yeah. that make it, make it uh, bad for you, right? And well, I mean, and one of the guys, and he's no longer with us, unfortunately, um, even on this plane of Earth, but he would say, okay, it's kind of like um, you're in the garage and you turn up all the, you know, all the gases, you know, you're going to choke to death if it goes. So it is, yes, there's a level when it's too much uh -huh. that, of course, it's, you know, you could potentially um, suffocate. So how do you decide what's, what, what's, too what's much? acceptable? Yeah. Uh, how do you decide what's acceptable? Well, right now, there, I mean, we, we'd have more growth with more um, gases. You know, it, it, the system would, it would change. We'd have um, growth. Some, define growth. growth. What are you talking about, growth? Um, Economic? No, or? no, 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 no. Um, plant, yeah, plant growth. Plant growth. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it would look different. We'd have warmer climates in certain places, but why is that always bad? You know, we've had climate change for, you know, millions of years. Why is that bad? Well, yeah, there is... So you're saying that... Uh, uh, this was, you know... Global warming isn't a problem, even if... Even if uh, it is man-made? I believe adaptation is really important in human species. So, yes, that's, that's my view. And for argument's sake, the minnows and the birds and the polar bears that can't adapt? Um, then they would, they would go, yes. And, and do I believe that we could be exacerbating it because we're actually putting um, particulates into the air? Then I would say we, we need to be responsible for... Um, affecting other people with particulates. Um, so, what tools did y'all envision being mutually agree agreeable uh, to 
voluntarily. I guess it probably didn't come out voluntarily. No, we didn't but, always. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then that stage, I, um, I was still a, a big L libertarian, right. where you know some regulation was okay. Right. And in that realm where you were polluting somebody else, then there was some you could stop them right. from polluting. Right. I have I have not yet had those conversations since then in a voluntary world right. world voluntarist world where we could do that all market based. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that's a conversation to be had. How would we do it market based without regulation, without even particular, without even you know, if you're polluting, you're you're throwing trash on somebody else. Let's say because it's the same thing. I think property rights is a big. It is, but but if you involuntary, a lot of them don't. We can go into the conversation about property rights too. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know, that it doesn't, doesn't exist relate. anymore. Yeah. For for an environmental conversation, that was a really great solution. What, was what, property what, rights. what do you mean it didn't exist anymore? Um, well, we've had a, we've had um, podcasts where property rights was not a, um, a espousal. You didn't want to espouse to have property. That it was more of a, um, uh, what's the word for it? Where you're taking care of it. Um, stewardship. Stewardship, yeah. But not property rights. So property rights was one of the one of the things that we all could see was a but, way but, uh, to solve some of the environmental issues. But pollution's going to harm more than the dirt. It's going to harm your plants, which you would own. Right. It would harm... Uh, possibly your home, yourself. But then we're saying so that's, that's property. still, that's still that's property, property rights. In in a world where we still have property There'd always rights. have to be some property rights that for peaceful society to exist. Okay, well, in let's my go, opinion, anyway. I, I agree yeah. too, but some of the conversations we've had in the past, it, there was a possibility that there wouldn't be property rights. Let's assume that there are property rights. Well, I think if we do assume If I recall, we were, yeah, we were, property, we were talking about maybe land. Defined yeah, land. specifically land. Right. And so I think that that's still, even whether we accept, whether it becomes land is held as property outright, or whether it's uh, limited use, terms of use, something like that, uh, we could still find... Uh, a way to ensure that the commons, in that in that respect, the commons aren't polluted, right? So air, it's not like we can own air unless you're a state, and you guess you can own airspace. But yeah. uh, well, they could say even if you had a piece of property, you own a certain amount that went up and went down, which well, would be water table. Well, but, it, but it, but 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 it's yeah. like <laughs> it, 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 it. He uh, did it. <laughs> It, yeah, it, yeah, second time. Okay. it mixes freely. You can't you can't like right. cordon can't off air, it, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So in other words, uh, polluting any air is essentially polluting yeah. all air. And so I would envision there'd be somebody like the Better Business Bureau, the Better Air Quality Board or whatever, you know, that's voluntary and they have uh, standards that are probably generally agreeable, uh, widely agreeable on, on minimum and maximum safe exposure limits on all right. these compounds and then uh, any party found polluting you know, or adding uh, over a certain limit on these things could be then uh, so, but how do you in a vol- in, in a non-coercive way you could, stop you can still you could report the fa- well you, that and you could at least report the fact that they're doing it to get the word out there Mm-hmm. So, people yeah. Cons- yeah, get, get. so people don't want to do business with them. Yeah, yeah they, and that's market based, right? Yeah. They, and yeah. that was that was those were some of the solutions that we uh, came up yeah. with. Yeah. Market based solutions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, and it should be said that you know a lot of uh, the pollution of various different forms that we have in the world today are there because the. Government subsidy? Yeah, government subsidies yeah. and the very fact that like the governments that are there to protect us allow it to happen. Oh, they allow it to happen. They they give them rights. Yeah, they to give do them it. the they ability to do it. And, and, you know, yeah. And, you know, and uh, well, here you shit, when it, when this it, land. Oh, we're not. Gonna, well, we won't look to see what you're doing. You know, or when it comes yeah. to like you know, we I think we mentioned it in the in uh, the last episode. You know, when they 
you know, they give them tax incentives to drill farther out. We don't want any beach goers in Florida seeing that oil rig go farther out. So, you know, they give them incentives to do it. And then you've got things like, uh, like fracking, for example. I mean, there, there's, there's one right there. Um, I mean, Jesus Christ. What, like, I mean, that is some horrible shit. Yeah. And, you know, and the EPA, remember, the Environmental Protection Agency says... That's kosher. Go ahead. You can just <laughs> shoot some bullshit halfway down through the Earth's crust and suck it back up, and there'll be no ramifications. You ain't damaging a thing. So, so if some people who live in the area are lighting their their yeah. water on fire, yeah, <laughs> or you know, I mean, and 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 not even to that extent. I mean, like, so much of where they're doing that, it's it's well water. You know, you got to think like a, like a large portion of the country. If you want to get your water from a well, you can do it. Maybe not so much around here. I the houses I had. You know, in our in our re- EMP reinforced bunker that we're in. But you know, uh, other places you can get a well, and you know, like large chunks of the country, you can put a well down and you can get water out. Well, you know, if somebody's fracking within like twenty miles, you're getting there's a damn good chance you're getting contamination from it. You know, because you know they they're they're pressurizing the, the the fluids, they're pushing it down there, and then they're sucking it back up, and so that's breaking up the rock that's down there, and so that's coming up as a slurry. So now you have negative space or a vacuum, and so that's pushing things in, and then anything else that's in there is getting spread out. And now you've got it in the in the so water. So how chamber. would we stop that? I mean, I don't see I, just, I, I don't see in a world with you with start, you know, yeah you start bringing them to court. Yeah, I don't see in a what world without don't. the government, like, okay. you know, papering it over and saying that they're going to cover their liability and all that sort of stuff, which is what they do, and say, like, oh, you're only liable for this amount. We'll take care of the rest. Yeah. You know, so without that, I, I can't see a company that's going to be like, oh, yeah, sure, we can, co- we, can, we can cover all this with an insurance policy. And then on top of that, the other thing is, is that you've got, like, corporations involved in this too, right? I still can't get past any sort of mental block in my head that says that there could be a legitimate, not a legitimate, but a corporation as we think in the modern sense right now right. in yeah. a voluntary society. Right. I don't yeah. see that happening. It would be a company, not yeah, a corporation. Yeah, so, so you'd have that, you'd yeah. have the personal liability put on right. like, you know, a few individuals. I think that's probably and they'd have to huge, think, yeah. that is a huge one because they'd have to think because real they hard have, about it. Because these structures have these special rights, they get away with, they get away with environmental disasters. Mm-hmm. They really yeah. do. There's no accountability. That's a really good one. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not, uh, uh, you know, John Rockefeller wasn't personally liable for a goddamn thing. He had a, yeah. he had standard yeah. oil. There yeah. was like standard yeah. oil is liable. Yeah. So, you know, he gets to kind of like, yeah. you know, write it off off the corporation. Yeah. Some accountant does it. He's not personally liable for it. So if there's no corporation, yeah. who's going to, you know, how much are your own personal money are you going to put forward? Or if you have an insurance company going, they might say like, well, so this is the, this is, you know, you can you can make the insurance company says that you can create this sort of gamble, if you will, with with the local environment because we only insure X amount. Beyond that, you're SOL. Well, well, no, so they're no, probably not going to want to do it. And they'll do it less I if think, they don't have a corporation which has. This yeah, exactly. They, so they you, they're not going to be. You know, if they're personally yeah. liable for yeah. for their own, you know, they're right. you know, if they're putting their own bread and butter at risk, yeah. they're probably not going to do yeah, it. No, that, that, I think there's true. another thing you got to mention too, and that is. Uh, IP. Yeah. Patents. In environment? Yeah. Patents keep things like green technology from uh, progressing yeah, quite right. right. That's right. very true. Mm-hmm. Suppression of IP. You know? Right. Yeah. Whoa. Suppression. Suppression. Well, a lot of these companies. Well, IP. Confiscation. A lot, a lot of these companies, too, them. these, uh, these um, you know, fossil fuel companies will buy a patents on any mm-hmm. any competitive right. competing competing ideas yeah. which keeps people right. from pursuing those those lines of technology yeah or, that's that's good yeah and actually i mean like that in and of itself the uh the in a world where there aren't corporations who have a uh, where there isn't the ability to limit one's liability, uh, that changes the world dramatically. Dramatically. Think, right? Mm-hmm. So much would change. So maybe you, you could argue we won't be getting to the moon again. No? Or, okay, or deep but, space travel, right? Yeah. But 
Uh, I, I think so there's, there's a couple of people who might come up with a billion dollars and be like, well, you willing to sign this liability agreement saying if you die on the way to the moon, you're cool with so. it? I'd do it myself. <laughs> sure, yeah, whatever. Yeah, what I'm saying is that, that mm-hmm. the mechanisms that allow yeah. that kind of concentration yeah. of wealth right. have, yeah, been, I see what you're saying. Yeah, have been right. removed, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, so it'd probably be a bunch of people that got together and said, hey, let's... Right, it would have to be some kind of a, yeah, mass crowdsourcing, crowdfunding mm-hmm. project of unfathomable... Virgin and Google uh, and Facebook and getting together saying they wanted to get to Mars. SpaceX. Would be yeah, SpaceX. Yeah. I wouldn't even. I mean, granted, I, well, that's it's just still that heavily subsidized too. Yeah, I, I, it's just saying more of multiple people working together. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned corporations again, so it's oh, yeah, a, and right, it's so right, it's so right, deeply right. ingrained in. I know. Uh, I know. And then, you know, and I'm, like, I'm not dinging yeah, you. I'm no, just saying no. no it's like well, really, it's yeah, not, it looks the, the end of the veil is not going to get rid of companies. These companies right. will still have business and they'll still have lots of money. It will be different, but they'll still have some money for investment into other areas. Well, I mean, I, I would hope personally that it, mutualism of some sort would would be more of the model, right? So we'll co- co- cooperation, cooperative co- companies, yeah. employee-owned yeah. companies. Yeah. So in other words, again, still, you know, you're talking about not a... The accumulation of wealth. So it doesn't really cost as much. But then again, it's with not really the same. It's money is not the issue. It's not what motivates people to do it. Without without patent laws, you'd also have quicker Progress. advancement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. With technologies. Again, I'm I'm completely saying free market. I, yeah. You know, right. Make sure yeah. That yeah. It, yeah. It, uh, you know, does he? Well, a corporation is not free thinking, market. Yeah. A corporation is exactly. It's just exactly. not free market. Right. Well, I mean, a, co- a corporation. If you if you look up the definition of corporation, even your normal dictionary usually has the exact same definition as legal as a legal dictionary does, and it says a corporation is an invisible, intangible creation of the law. It does not exist. It right. says it right there in the definition. It's not real. It's just you know. So. You know, yeah, like legal you, fiction. It's a legal fiction, yeah. The, the, the state of of Nevada or Oregon or Washington is a legally a legal subdivision of the United States. It's also a corporation. It's just a, you know something they come up with called a name and all that and sign it off. Uh, you you mentioned company. Company is is. Uh, Oh no, can I not be using that? No, 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 no. company's fine. No, 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 no. I'm trying to I figure don't. out a word for the, this, the, thing, this is, you know, no, 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 company's fine because this is being, being nerdy about words kind of. Okay. So, so, um, uh, a company does hey, not, rhetoric is important. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Company does not imply corporation. Okay. Company, what it came from was simply, I have a certain amount of people who right. are part of my company. They are in my company, it's, you see that it's word a like com- thing, isn't no, it? not company? even. No. Well, originally, like kind company of. is in like yeah. the company one keeps. Yeah, oh, they are. Yeah, right. they're part of your people that are around. They're part of your company. So there, so there could they're be people you associate with. Okay, right. That's a company. Okay. It doesn't necessarily imply a corporation. It doesn't even though so now it a business. But maybe a business would be better to say. Maybe. I don't know. Company companion. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, you know, uh, Probably can look that up. It's probably the relation. Well, I'm looking for. Okay, when you say a corporation, most people get in their heads that it's it's this entity that wants to make money for people. You know, wants to provide a product or a service, and mm-hmm. that's really what the company. So, mm-hmm. Psalms the corporation. They'll still be businesses. Maybe well, businesses. yeah. I, I think yeah. one of the big fallacies is it. And this is a little. We're we're starting to veer off topic a little right, bit. Yeah. I just want to get this really in real right, quick. Okay, I think enough. one of the fallacies is looking at it, the internal economy of a company as different from the external economy that the company deals. So, what do you mean by ju- that? just like a company has customers? that it serves with products or services, their employees are just uh, service providers to the person that's paying them. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So it's it's the same. Proximatically, it's the same kind of transaction. So I think I think it's a misnomer to to think about uh, companies instead of individuals providing services and the... and products in exchange for for money. Uh, yeah, yeah, medium of exchange. No, no, that, that's a good way to think about it. You're, so you're taking and you're kind of reeling it back to the individual. Like yeah. really all this is is just still individual Individuals, interactions. Yeah. And yeah. that's uh, always something good to, to relate and think about and bring up. And I, I guess how to, how to tie that in. I was thinking how do you tie it yeah, into how, how do you, Yeah, how, how are we tying individuals back into all this is that like when, you know, as an individual, if you own a plot of land and you know, you pollute on it, your responsibility can go beyond that property that you say you own. If whatever you do on it then travels on to somebody else's, goes downstream, whatever, you're liable for it because it started on yours. You've got you to fix that, you know? Well, but also if we don't have a corporation and the people who are right. working or for this business... Mm -hmm are now just interactions between people, mm -hmm. they then become liable for polluting mm -hmm. um, in this interaction mm -hmm. between people, mm -hmm. which is an environmental plus, you know, yeah. that, that could I, really help. I think another thing we need to think about is when, when you are, when somebody does consider um, something that is polluting and they know it is, mm -hmm. uh, if they're a voluntarist or whatever you want to call yourself, somebody who doesn't believe in government, you, you should look at it in a way, how am I going to do this without harming somebody else? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, have empathy for other people and looking at, like, if I'm hurting myself, I'm going to hurt somebody else. Or if you know you're going to end up hurting somebody else or possibly hurting somebody else, uh, then you should realize, hey, I, I shouldn't do this because I don't want a government. I don't want to have to, uh, you know, uh, negotiate this in a court or anything like that. Right. So it's important, important for people who are voluntarists to think, what what should I do in this situation so I can I don't get the government involved? What what is it that I can do um, to you know if if this is going to harm somebody else is it better to just not do it altogether or you know? Are you looking at that as a now thing or in the well, in the world where well, well now we are, and uh, people who who believe in you know not getting the government involved if you can't negotiate somebody something out with somebody you say you're polluting you're, you you possibly will pollute doing something. And you can't, it's not possible to get everybody involved, uh, their, you know, permission, as you want to call it, the, to be polluted, whatever, whatever word you want to use, then should you not do it at all? I mean, is that a... Oh, but there are people out there who will just pollute. Well, that's true. Good, good points, but are, I think that... Uh, part of it, though, is because the, the, uh, because of the externalities. Exactly. Okay. I think you're going to say exactly okay. what I was about to say, right? Yeah. It, uh, People that I, I, somebody reposted something that I posted recently on Facebook. Uh, I posted it a while back, but it was basically making the claim that every major company today would go bankrupt if they were held fully accountable for right. their, right. for their act, for the actions of, of themselves, their own actions. Hmm. And further, when we're talking about, uh, you know, this system that allows or benefits, you know, larger economies of scale or, you know, the bigger the better because they can do it cheaper, that particular model, when you, that's removed, then we're looking at a natural local, more right. localized Rounds economies, type, right? Yeah. And when people are participate and, 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 and cultivate these local economies, all of a sudden we're a lot more sensitive to the, to, to what's yeah. in our immediate yeah. right. Area, right? And, and so we'll, I think we'll naturally start, that'll start, like kickstart a natural, more symbiotic relationship with, mm -hmm. with what's around us. You're a lot less likely to pollute your own, uh, you know, the thing that makes you wealth or makes you, you know, sustains you. It's a lot more unlikely that you're going to pollute that. Yeah. It puts the responsibility in our face, actually, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Mutual responsibility. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, here, here's kind of a odd example. Maybe I'm taking it to a little bit of an extreme, but let's say you're doing something on your property that requires a full hazmat suit and breather and all that sort of stuff. You know, like, you should probably consider the fact that 
Odds are, if you're having to wear a full hazmat suit and a breather, it's going to affect your neighbors. Is this something you really need to do? You know, is this something that is absolutely necessary for your survival? Like, if you know that you have to wear this stuff in order to be around it, it's getting into the air, for sure. You know, so is, is that perhaps the best thing that you need to do? Is there, is there an alternative to what you're doing? You know? See, this to me is where culture comes in, as we as people start thinking about those things as an important part of our daily life. We just get robots to do those. Well, we can get robots jobs. to do that. <laughs> we can get robots can to do it. We can get robots to do that. Like prostitutes. Well, oh, would, I mean, would, would they have multiple functions as a robot? Gases? No, they're going to drug them with the gases. Whoa. And then, hey, guys, we're, we're uh, over time. Uh, I want to do like a review of like Ex Machina and say what a great movie that was. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good movie. It was a good movie. It was a fun one. Was yeah, go see it. Go see it. Um, waiting for that check, right? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>